Brethren in Christ, love day to Jesus Christus in secula. This is Timothy Flanders with the Meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King, and the Holy Fast of Lent is upon us. It is Mardi Gras. If you're, if you're a Roman Catholic, you are still enjoying your Mardi Gras. But if you are a Greek Catholic, Lent has already begun. Yesterday was Cheese Fair Sunday, which is where there is the Forgiveness Vespers. So I, I say publicly to all, all my fellow Catholics, if I have offended any of you in any way, please forgive me a sinner. That is how we are to begin Lent, is to uh, attempt to reconcile with all of our brethren. And as the, the act of charity in the Roman rite says, I ask forgiveness from all whom I have wronged. I forgive all who have wronged me. And we really cannot ask God's forgiveness unless we ask forgiveness also from our brother and also pardon our brother and harbor no feelings of resentment or woundedness against our brother in order for us to begin Lent. And in the Roman Rite, it's very similar. We have Ash Wednesday, and Ash Wednesday comes from the fact that the Lenten season was a time for the penitents to finalize their penance. And in the early church, this meant that if you committed a grave sin, if you committed a mortal sin, like let's say you committed adultery, you had to do penance. You were excommunicated for a number of years and you could not receive Holy Communion. And in your final uh, Lent, you would put on ashes as a public penitent. So this the most famous example of this is Emperor Theodosius. Um who was who was excommunicated by St. Ambrose. So he was the emperor and St. Ambrose excommunicated him. And he, the emperor himself, and it was because he had slaughtered uh, people, I think it was Thessaloniki, I believe, but he had committed murder um, and killed, uh, slaughtered a bunch of people in a city, which he uh, was excommunicated for. And Emperor Theodosius joined the penance, the penitents who had been excommunicated uh, so he put on ashes and he did this. So this was what the people who were excommunicated did. And nowadays we do, we all put on the ashes as if we are all excommunicated. And in the Roman Rite, you can actually see this in the, uh, I'm not sure if it's still in the 62, but it's, it should be definitely in the pre-55 liturgy. On Holy Thursday, that was when the penitents were reconciled and they received Holy Communion again. Uh, the collect for Holy Thursday mentions the damnation of Judas and it um, and it mentions and I'm not sure if it mentions the penitents there or it does in another place, but the penitents, those who are excommunicated. So it's, it's a similar concept to the Greek rite of forgiveness in that we are all putting our putting on ourselves the ashes of the penitents who were excommunicated. So once again, I say publicly to all my Catholic brethren, forgive me a sinner and I forgive you. Whatever wrong you've done me, I forgive you. God forgives and I forgive. I hold nothing against anyone. Let's all begin penit the, the season of penance in the proper spirit. Um, this The first part of this show, we will release this publicly, and the rest of it will be for the Fellowship of St. Anthony, um, because we're doing our spiritual reading, uh, Meditations on Death. By Thomas Kempis. You can buy this book below. Tan Books has just brought this into English translation for the first time. So thank you, Tan Books. Um, but this is what this apostolate is all about, is, is working to promote truth and charity among Catholics to unite Catholics against the enemies of Holy Church. And we always need your support. We Every month we lose guild members, people who are supporting the financial uh, parts of this financial uh, for supporting financially this whole apostolate. Every month we lose people because people just have financial issues or, you know, whatever they they have to cancel their guild membership, which can be as low as five dollars a month. Uh, but so every month we're losing people. And so we have to regain those those financial supporters. And then we have to add more sub financial supporters if we are able, to, if we want to grow and, and hire people, basically. Right now, the income, it helps my income, it helps the writers, um, but we would love to expand this and be able to hire people, but we just don't have the income to do that right now. So 
that's where we're at. So if you can support us, you can go to um, meaningofcatholic.com slash register. We are setting up a locals, so we will be on locals um, once I get that all set up. I haven't had time yet to do that. Um, but so right now, go to meaningofcatholic.com slash register. You can also go to meaningofcatholic.com slash donate to just give a one-time donation. That is how you become a guild member and you access the online community. And one of the online communities, the spiritual core, is the Fellowship of St. Anthony, which is our lay sodality that offers up penances for the clergy. And that is our role and is our effort in this in this whole apostolate, lay apostolate, is to help the church. And as lay people, we want to help the clergy by offering penances for them. So um, that is basically it. But here's our here's our Lenten plan. <clears throat> I, and I, I should say also, if anybody uh, like is following this and they had to cancel their guild membership because of financial reasons, you can always still access guild content. It's always free for people who have any financial difficulties, anybody who is poor, anybody who just can't afford it. It's always free for you. So just contact me and we can work out something. So the guild is here to support the apostolate and also support each other. So um, we are supporting uh, the Maynard family in particular, who is, is dealing with a very severe health issue. Uh, so we're offering up all our penances for Jer Maynard, who is in serious uh has a serious medical condition <clears throat> excuse me and uh we've been raising fi finances for them as well um in fact let me put that link as well on this show so everybody can continue to donate to the maynard family um i'll, I'll grab that link and put it on the on the show notes as well we, we've i know there's two different um there's two different things there but so we're going to get to chapter three of meditations on death in just a minute um but for finally i, I want to just review what we're doing for lent um which so the fellowship of saint anthony the tier one requirement is right here on the link below the tier one requirement is pretty minimal it's pretty minimal it's not it's not that hard it's monday wednesday friday meatless well now we have a guest commentator what's up harry henry what's up buddy Questions. Yes, what are your two questions? Number one. Daddy, can I? Oh, Henry's talking. How? What What kind of protein can I have to get a rice crispy treat? What kind of protein? Well, you already had one for breakfast, though. Okay, so you can't eat another one until lunch. Okay. 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 Are you hungry right now? Yeah. You are. Okay. JJ, please get off the bag. Okay, I'm just going to ask you where's the whiteboard. Where I don't want you to do the whiteboard right now while I'm watching, not watching you. Okay, Henry, you can go eat that I cereal that's on the on the counter upstairs. Watching. Can you go eat that cereal that's up there? No, I I only eat cereal that has milk. Okay, milk. please close the door. All right, so you see why. Uh, I have bills to pay and mouths to feed. So those are some of the mouths I have to feed. So please support the apostolate. <laughs> What'd you say, Henry? I didn't ask you my number one. Okay, what's the number one question? I need my number two question. Number two question. So, so I have to repeat in my, my pants. Feed in your pants? Okay. No. Here, all right, here. Can you ask mommy about that yeah, upstairs? And I'll, I'll come help in a minute. <clears throat> All right. Um, so the Lenten fast that we have is not that difficult. You can do this Monday, Wednesday, Friday, meatless, and then Wednesday, Friday fasting. So it's just a little bit harder than the existing rules, but it's still going to put a dent in your discipline. But then tier two, tier two goes full bore vegan Lent for the duration of Lent. That's difficult. And fasting on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So vegan includes also Sunday. And if you go vegan, it's difficult because you have to get all your proteins with plants only. And you can't eat fish. So it's it's a little bit difficult. Make sure that you, if you are going to go tier two, um, take a look at the resources that are in the fellowship because you do need to get a pre complete protein. 
uh, vegan and it's a little bit tricky to do that. Lentils, for example, is a really good uh, vegan protein. Um, but we can talk all about that. And then we, we daily prayer, the prayer to avert God's wrath. Oh God, who by sin are offended and by penance appeased, personally regard the prayers of thy people, making supplication to thee and turn away the scourge of thy wrath, which for our sins we deserve. And that's part of it is that we, we you know, we can complain and compl com complain and cry that we have bad clergy and, or abuse crisis and all that stuff. But ultimately we deserve these bad clergy for our sins. And this is part of the wrath of God. So we ask God to avert his wrath by doing penance that he may send us better clergy. So that's the tier one and tier two. And then we also have the annual Bible reader. So we're going through, that's optional. Some of us are doing that. That's the full, right now we're going through the Pentateuch. And then there's a little lot more reading that comes in during Passion Tide as well. And then in, into Paschal Tide. Also optional challenge, 50 minutes of daily mental prayer. And then we're also doing the spiritual reading and we'll do it. This is what part of what we'll do in, in just a few minutes is chapter three of the, of the book what we're reading and discussing. Um, and part of this will be a public show, which I will broadcast later this week uh, about the Lent spiritual reading challenge, because that's more generally for everybody. But so if you want to join the fellowship of St. Anthony uh, right now, we have uh, how many members we've got. 100 i think 114 so there's 114 members right now in the fellowship of saint anthony so you can join us in offering up these penances this lent if you become a guild member but if again if you can't afford that just contact me and i can give you free membership if you can't afford it so all right let's read our book and we'll discuss it so this is meditations on death Preparation for Eternity by Thomas A. Kempis. Remember to buy the book below. This is the only English translation that exists in this is, is published by Tan Books. So we really appreciate Tan Books bringing this into English uh, for the sake of the church. Another classic by Thomas A. Kempis. And so we'll be reading this and discussing it. So buy the book below from Tan Books. Let's mark the time here, 1234. All right. <clears throat> Chapter three, the final judgment. My friend, reflect next upon how much terror and anxiety there will be at the great scene of the final judgment. The miraculous trumpets of angels shall then sound a deafening fanfare. Great bolts of blazing lightning will illuminate the earth and the sky with a blinding luminosity. Tumultuous thunder will roar, penetrating into the very depth of each human heart. The earth, the sea, the heavens themselves will all tremble. Consider the enormity of the wrath of the most just judge, which will blaze against those who have offended him through disobedience and, di and disbelief. From this wrath, an abject and paralyzing fear will engulf the minds of all those who are guilty and terribly even terrify even the innocent. And consider the fateful and irreversible division of the assembled multitude, which will take then take place. For those who are righteous, humble, and meek, will be directed to the right hand of the throne of judgment. Whereas the proud, envious, and uncharitable, the wicked, will be sent away to the left. Those on the right will rejoice, knowing that they are destined for eternal bliss, while those on the left will quake and quail, realizing the horrendous fate that awaits them, and none will know with certainty in advance to which side they will be sent, neither pope nor bishop, nor king nor beggar, nor even convicted criminal, for God alone perceives in the depths of heart and knows all secret thoughts and actions, and he shows mercy to whom he wills. Thus, there will be two standing together, apparently similar in their conduct, beliefs, and morals, and one will be taken away and the other left. How shocked and taken aback will many of those who are proud and elated in this vain and deceptive world. For the Lord God shall exalt above such presumptuous people, the poor, the wretched, the rejected, and the lowly. They will see those whom they regarded as vile and treated with contempt and disdain, being richly rewarded and being granted all the dignities and splendor of heaven. The proud and haughty will then declare in their hearts, these are the ones whom we held in derision and ridicule. We considered their lives as foolishness and believed that their ends would be without honor. But behold, now they are numbered amongst the children of God. Wisdom 5.4 And then all the righteous will stand up.